Hello, in this last video I want to talk about the um, different ways of annotating your plot uh, with ticks or legends and how you lay out different subplots in your um, in your figures. Okay, starting with legends. Um, legends are very useful for indicating uh, which parts of a plot belong to which label. And um, in this example here, we plotted two temperature um, yeah, histories of two cities. But when just looking at this plot, it's not clear which cities uh, this is about. And for that, a label would be very nice or a legend. And the way we do that in Matplotlib is specifying this label parameter in the plot call. So when calling this plot function and passing the data for one city, for example, we can set the label to one of the cities and then in the end call extra legend and um, this call to uh, to the legend function is very important because this will enable um, the legend and if you don't call this function this will not show even though uh, you might specify this label so you always have to call the legend function and this will add this legend into your plot here and by default Matplotlib will choose a location inside the plot which will overlap the least amount with any of your uh, figures, so with, with any of your um, plots in inside the subplot. But you can also manually choose the location um, and you can do that by passing the lock argument to the legend call, uh, to the legend function and specifying one of these, um, yeah, one of these values here. And the default, as I said, is best um, and the best will just try to minimize the overlap. But we can also, for example, pass center, and this will position the, um, the legend in the center of the plot. Okay, now coming to ticks and uh, yeah, different ways of modifying the ticks of a plot. And first of all, a tick is the location of a tick label. And these tick labels are then the um, text that is written at a certain tick which indicates, uh, for example, a coordinate on the x-axis or on the y-axis um, yeah, or maybe the name of a certain bar in a bar plot. And then uh, the last part is the tick line and this is the small line that is um, yeah, indicating where exactly on the axis um, this tick can be found. And you can modify the ticks and the tick labels using um, the set function again, but be careful because you have to call a set on the x-axis or the y-axis and not on the x, so the axis object itself. But if we call this on the x-axis, for example, we can set the ticks to this range and uh, the ticks will be the positions, as I already said. So these will be the coordinates on the x-axis. And then the tick labels, um, we can pass an iterable and this iterable has to contain as many elements as we have ticks. And this will just assign the label to each of the ticks that we specified above. And then we can also set more tick params. And this is directly on the axis object again. And um, yeah, in this case, for example, here, we set um, for the y axis the direction of the tick lines to be inside and set the length of the tick lines to 10. So if we do this, you can see that these tick lines on the y axis now look different and um, the x tick, uh, tick labels are now the labels that we put in um, in this call up here. And for this case, uh, this might not be too useful, but uh, just imagine a bar plot like this one. And now it makes a lot of sense to set these tick labels um, for the corresponding bars to identify which bar um, talks about which category. Okay. Now coming to subplot spacing and subplot spacing is the way how you position your different subplots inside the subplot grid. And sometimes um, it's a little difficult to get these plots right um, because there might be overlaps between uh, the tick labels or the titles of certain subplots. And um, yeah, Matplotlib gives you a lot of control over where everything should be and it will not do much automatically. And this is a design choice um, by Matplotlib because it wants to be very transparent and um, yeah, not confusing to anyone 
So if you want to move something somewhere, then it will actually appear where you specified it and not um, try to like move things out of the way um, like other programs might do that. Uh, for example, in LaTeX, it can be very uh, tedious to get your figures at the right position because it will um, try to figure out where the best position would be. But this best position is, uh, yeah, in some cases not really the best one or the one that you want. And therefore, Matplotlib gives you a lot of control over where your plots should be, where your subplots should be. And um, in this example here, we just create uh, four subplots using the subplots function. So we have two rows and two columns. And then we call uh, the subplots adjust function on the figure. And uh, this will take a lot of arguments, which um, tell Matplotlib a lot about where the subplots should be located on this grid. And this W space and H space are the width space and the height space. And um, yeah, this will tell Matplotlib how much space should there be between two plots, two subplots, um, one in the vertical direction and one in the horizontal direction. And then these left, right, top and bottom parameters um, tell Matplotlib how much uh, yeah, margin there should be um, from the plots to um, the outside. And as you can see here, um, we have nicely separated these plots into their own um, yeah, positions on this grid. But this will always be a grid. So you can't move one of these plots a little bit down and leave the other ones where they are. This will always be a static grid and um, you can only move like the, the columns or the rows individually um, and not individual subplots. Okay, yeah, you could also, of course, um, move individual subplots, but then you wouldn't use subplots because subplots are grid based. Um, but for that, you could add axis directly by calling fig.addAxis, for example. But um, yeah, Matplotlib also has a functionality to automatically um, make a plot better. And this is called the tight layout. And this is a function that you can call on the figure and this will um, run an algorithm and um, try to minimize the overlap between any parts of your subplots. And um, we have an example here, which just re uh, creates these four plots, which have quite a large title and um, labels. And yeah, they all, uh, they all overlap in some way. So this Y label here sticks into this plot and the titles are overlapping the tick labels of the plots above. And um, yeah, it would be quite a lot of manual work to adjust the, um, the layout parameters, the subplot parameters to get this right. Um, and therefore Matplotlib also includes this tight layout function, which will automatically adjust this. But still note that you don't have to call this and you could do everything yourself and this is the freedom you have in Matplotlib so you don't have to rely on any automatic adjustment you could also um, do everything manually but if you want to use tight layout this is very useful and this will just um, yeah move uh, yeah scale this, these plots uh, appropriately such that we don't have any overlaps anymore and um, yeah now everything looks a little nicer but this will, of course, uh, shrink the size available for the actual graphs here. All right. And now just a very small note on uh, Matplotlib 3D. And uh, yeah, Matplotlib actually supports 3D plots. Um, although this is not the main focus of Matplotlib, they still want to um, yeah, give you the opportunity to try this out and to create these 3D plots. And for that, We'll uh, enable the Matplotlib widget backend, which allows us to actually interactively um, control the, the 3D plot here. And um, yeah, in this example, we have to import the uh, mplot3d submodule from the MPL toolkits. And um, more specifically, we'll import the access 3D um, object and this access 3D, um, yeah, this API thing. And uh, now we can create a subplot 
and uh, tell Matplotlib this, uh, that this should be a 3D plot by supplying this subplot keyword. And uh, this will be a dictionary where we tell it that projection should be 3D. And then we can just um, use this API um, access 3D <coughs> from the toolkits and uh, get some testing data. And then we'll plot a wireframe of uh, this testing data. So we, uh, we got the X, Y, and Z co coordinates of our testing data. And we will pr plot this in a wireframe with um, yeah, the wires or the, the lines of this wireframe plot, um, five in each direction. So the distance between the lines will be five. And if we run this, as you can see here, now we have this plot. And we can actually move this around interactively. And this is what the, um, yeah, the widget backend will do for us. And um, yeah, this can be used to create 3D plots as well. But um, the 3D plots in Matplotlib are not as powerful as the 2D ones um, because Matplotlib just doesn't put its focus on 3D plots. But this might change in the future since Matplotlib um, is still being developed and yeah, they might add better functionalities to the 3D plots.